Alrighty. I think we're going live. Sometimes it takes a second. There we are. Hey, everybody. We are going live. Okay. I'm going to wait a little bit, see if some folks jump in on here. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, here am I, I am again with the boys, um, the Avengers, some of my favorite folks. Um, some things I want to talk about announcement-wise before we get into uh, what's on my heart today. Um, one thing that uh, we are doing um, as a youth group, uh, we are actually uh, starting over with our Minecraft. Um, our last realm that we had was a Minecraft realm where our students were able to uh, re like they built a replica of the church and they started on um, Veritas and it all looks great. Um, so I saved that and we kept that and we had this other idea um, as a group and, and what we decided that we wanted to do is we wanted to have a contest. We wanted to have a, a build off if you will. And so our next project is uh, students have been um, they've made up to teams of two people. Um, I think we actually have one that has three but I allowed it. Um, and so they each get a plot of about, uh, I think it's 50 blocks by 50 blocks of, of land where they can build a, a Bible story. So they will be tasked with building a Bible story. I've seen some of it already. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Um, we have some, some really good looking uh, Minecraft builds. Um, we're going to have judges uh, determine who wins and the winner will get a prize. And I'm hoping that within the next two weeks... Um, but maybe a little bit after that, I'll be able to sit down and have a, a kind of just a, a playthrough of it. I can show you what everybody's build looks like. Uh, maybe we can have votes. We're still talking about all that, what we want to do. Um, but so stay tuned for that. That's going to be really fun. Our students are just looking for ways to interact with each other. And this also gives them um, an opportunity to... Um, they've already been floating around Bible studies, and so this is a chance for them to, to dig into their Bible and really read some scripture and um, make sure that they understand their Bible stories well. So that's one thing we're doing. Um, today, what I want to talk about, last week um, we had a, a Facebook Live that was shared about the, uh, the backpack program, um, and then as part, it's, so that was part of my live, and then I also had a statement that I had shared um, in regards to current events and things that are going on. And I kind of want to talk about that a little bit today, but um, there's this little bit of scripture that um, I had seen out of 1 Corinthians that has really uh, stuck in my mind recently. And that's 1 Corinthians 15 uh, verses 56 through 58. And here's what that says. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. And that was verse 56. So already my, my eyes are open to, to what God has to say through the scripture. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. So when I read that scripture, I was just, you know, I was kind of thinking, especially recently, um, you know, there, there have been um, some protests going on that have escalated into a, a lot of different things. And, um, our, our youth group has talked about it a lot. It's been something that, um, has been in our hearts and on our minds. And, um, one thing that, uh, is floated around a lot is, well, you know, I don't really, I, I agree that there's injustice going on, but, um, how can, what can I do about it? You know, and, and sometimes that, that does look like, uh, protesting. We have, we have people protest, uh, peacefully, especially in town. It went really well. Um, that's something to, to bring, um, notice to the problem, you know, and that's good. Uh, but not everybody can do that. 
And so I just wanted to talk about a really practical way, a really, uh, a really genuine way um, that you can share the light of Christ um, during an opportune time such as this. So this scripture, what it is saying, is essentially that um, the power of the sin in our life can come from the the structure of the laws around us, not the laws that that God gave us, but just the structure of of, of society. We 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 are not a perfect society, and and if anybody thought we were, I'm sure that as of recently you've probably realized that that's impossible outside of, of God having his hands in absolutely everything. We, we are not a perfect society. We have broken God's laws. We've broken his commandments. We have not loved our neighbors with our whole heart. We have not taken care of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We failed to do that in a lot of ways. And it's evident. And it's not just evident in, in the case of, of George Floyd. It's, it's evident every day. Um, you know, I, I think back, you know, especially when I was younger, I would say to myself, like, oh, well, you know, I don't do those things. I see people do those things, and I see people say those things and post those things, but but I don't do those things. So I'm good, right? I probably shouldn't worry about it. In this scripture, in, in verse uh, 58, it says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and let nothing move you. How many times have you stood aside as somebody said something or did something completely inappropriate, completely against God's will? Maybe it was racist, maybe it was sexist, maybe it was just outright unkind. How many times has that happened right in front of you and you did nothing to be, uh, to be the light of Christ in the situation? You did nothing to, to be the voice of, of, of God's word. You did nothing to say a scripture or simply say, I don't believe that. I mean, sure, we, we've all stood up for um, a friend or, or maybe even a stranger once in a while, but um, it's a constant battle. I mean, this scripture is sitting here telling me that um, every time I, I passively allow something to go on um, without saying anything about it, like, I'm contributing to the problem. I've let something move me. Um, something other than the Holy Spirit has moved me, and, and it's not always, it's not good. Being passive is not the way that we can become, that it's not the way that we are Christians. We are not passive Christians. We are active Christians. And maybe, you know, especially right now with uh, quarantine going on and all that, it's, it's hard to, to gather in the masses physically, but it, it's not hard at all um, to, hear, to hear something or to see something read and to immediately say, that's not my God. That's not what my God believes. Um... So that's one thing we can do. If you hear something, say something. Stand up and say, that's not my God, that's not my faith. And then you need to tell them, what is your faith? And that's number two. You need, you need to know what the Bible says about love. You need to know what the Bible says about equality. Um, I know, I think a couple weeks ago I talked about uh, Galatians. Um, there's the, the passage in Acts 2. Um, at the you know for Pentecost it mentions that uh, that you will you will hear of you will hear about God from people who are nowhere near this land people who are uh, you know you're going to hear it from women you're going to hear it from people who aren't from the same country as you you're going to hear it from people who don't speak the same language that you do these people will be the ministers for God and then in that Galatians passage where it says that we are neither uh, Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free. God's love is a love of equality. God loves every single one of us equally. And that's in the Bible. That's in Scripture. God loves absolutely every one of us equally. And I'll do you one more. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. God has one begotten Son. God has one flesh and blood Son. And the rest of us are adopted. And he loves each and every one of us just as much as he loves Jesus. God loves everyone equally. Every person you see out there, every negative thought you have about an individual, that individual is loved by God. It's in the book, and I believe it. So number two, once you hear something, you got to say something, and you got to say, 
that's not my book. That's not the God I, that I follow. It's not the God I, that I believe in. God I believe in loves everybody. Third thing you need to do is listen. And that, that may be a tough one for a lot of us. Um, I've been following um, these interviews with this guy. His name's Daryl Davis, and he was a, a, a musician. He is a musician. He's an amazing musician. Um, he uh, had been playing in uh, with different bands and different bars and such, and um, he ended up at a bar um, that was often visited by Klansmen. And he was an African-American man. And so uh, one day, uh, somebody had approached him. He didn't know that they were Klansmen, and, and they began to say, you know, I've never seen somebody like you uh, play uh, piano like that. You know, it's crazy. And so they began to talk, and suddenly uh, this man sitting across from Daryl had said, he admitted, he said, I'm in the Ku Klux Klan. And, uh, you know, showed him his clan badge and his membership and all that. And here he was sitting across the table from an African-American man who could not believe it. So they began to talk. And then um, this man eventually was banished from the KKK for talking with Daryl. And then Daryl ended up finding a way to sneak a conversation in with one of the heads of the KKK. He had a, uh, a brotherhood of about 200 folks and... And uh, this man was caught off guard. He was invited into Daryl's home. And um, after a while, they just sat down. And all they did was talk. Because all Daryl really wanted to know is, how can you hate me when you don't really know me? And he genuinely wanted to know the answer to that. And uh, what they discovered, the truth is, the more they got to know each other, the more they began to understand uh, that they didn't hate each other. They had a lot in common. And over the course of of several conversations, and he even attended some clan rallies, um, he was able to convince several members that um, what they were doing was not Christ-like, and they left the clan, and they became friends, and they're still friends to this day. And one thing that, that uh, he honestly believes is that um, this violence and this anger that we're seeing today, it's being caused by fear. And it's being caused by fear because we fear the things we don't understand. And if we fear the things we don't understand, and it causes us to be violent in this way, then obviously a way to, to solve this particular problem is for us to, to no longer not understand each other. We need, to, we need to be willing to listen to each other. Not just, not with judgment. We need to listen to each other so that we can understand. And only that way will the fear be gone and we can start to realize more and more, what is it that, that God tells us to do? Who is our neighbor? And how can we love them and do what we're supposed to do, um, even during times like this? And so that's, that's, what, I, that's what I would say is, is the, best, uh, the best course for us as, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, our communities of our brothers and sisters are hurting. And it's a fact. Um, there's a lot of emotions on, on um, all different angles of, of the conversation. It's not an easy conversation to have. And, and up until now, it's been like we've been putting a Band-Aid on cancer, and, and here it is. What do we, and what do we do now? How do we fix it? How do we change? And how do we do better? And so I'm glad that those conversations are starting, and I, I pray and I really hope that, uh, that they continue. Uh, because the only way things will get better is we have if if we have these conversations and and as um, Reverend Brent Higdom has said several times and, and I wholeheartedly agree with him, the solution to this problem has to start with the church because it is the church that was ordered to love all of our neighbors, regardless of race, color, creed. And what, it was not our nations, it wasn't our banks, it wasn't our restaurants, it was our church that was ordered to do that, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so um, I hope that this week and every week um, you take the time to listen, um, to speak, and to speak up, and to, uh, to have those conversations even when they're, even when they're difficult, uh, because it's, it's for the better of our entire world. So... Um, I'd like to, to close us in prayer. 
So I invite you to pray with me. Father Almighty God, um, we thank you for all that you have already given us. We are so blessed um, to have this community of faithful Christians who, who love one another and serve one another and, and uh, build each other up in this life. And God, we're, we're very blessed for that. But God, I pray that you would, uh, to take us even further beyond our borders, take, take us out of our comfort zone, take us into this place where we can bring the light of Christ to the front lines of where it needs to be seen. God, please help us to remind this world that there is love in it and that there are supportive people in it and that there is a God that loves us all and there's a God who is in control and uh, there is a God who will get the last word in all of this. God, help us to speak up against that which is oppressive, that which is injustice, and that which is not your will. Help us speak up against that. And at the same time, God, help us to listen as well as be heard so that we can transform the lives around us. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I'll see you next week, um, and I'll see you Sunday. Uh, I will try to keep everybody updated with our Bible build off. Build, blah, blah. It's, uh, it's hard to say. I don't know why I named it this. Our Bible build off contest. Um, I'll keep you updated with how that goes. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, if you are somebody who wants to participate in that, it is not too late. Um, please, please, please contact me. Send me a message on Facebook. Uh, call me, text me, email me. Um, we, we still have room and it's Minecraft. We can have all the room we need. And if it's something that you're, is complicated and you don't really know how to get started in it, I can help you. It's super easy. Um, so I can't wait to see you guys. Um, love all of you. Miss all of you. And uh, I hope you have a, uh, a blessed week.